And we're live. Pop in my, not my LaCroix, my TJ's uh, raspberry lime sparkling water. So, you know, I'm living my best life. I've got a little so delicious coconut ice cream sandwich action that I might crack into. Um, and I'm just going to give everybody a minute to get on in here. It is just me tonight. I've been very tired because of autoimmune fun times, changing some meds. So I decided I did not have the energy to try to coordinate <laughs> uh, getting other people in here. So, but I think we're, we're still going to have a good combo. Welcome, Jocelyn. Woo -woo. Andrew, we got the whole party crew in here. Good evening. Hello to Ottawa. Howdy, howdy. Hello, everybody's in the his house. Okay, give everybody a minute to get on in here. The cats may be particularly poorly behaved tonight. There was a cleaning crew in here today and a plumber. And so they are deeply traumatized and may never fully recover. So um, they may not be super well behaved. We'll see. We, uh, we'll see how long we can hold out here. Hello, hello. Got a good little crew gathering in here. Hello. Hi there. First time catching a live when it's live. Yay. Welcome. Oh, yes. Black Aweenathon. All the details for Black Aweenathon are over on the Locked Bookticians YouTube slash Brie. So you guys should go check that out. Hello. Glad you guys are excited for the topic. Um, <laughs> Jamie, this is actually <laughs> one of my items, so not wrong there. Yeah, you know, they're so adorable. So even if they're terribly behaved, we love them. Hello. Yes. Okay. So I think giving people a chance to filter in here. So I want to properly credit the idea origin for this particular live. Um, okay, I forget what what video this was on, but uh, I got this comment from Dr. Jade and um, I thought that this was a great idea and I was trying to decide how I wanted to do this and I decided that I felt like a live would be the best format. So Dr. J said, I love the diversity of books, authors, genres, light versus serious that you read. Do you have a video with a strategy for how you pick slash find books? Um, you always have such a variety of picks while, while also managing to keep up, also having a full-time job and giving us such good content. I think I saw one on how you read so much, but I'm so curious about your organization of finding your picks. Do you have any sort of strategy trying to do the same and manage to read a lot, but not always as good about finding a broad amount of things. Um, I'm always amazed by how you managed to do this so well and what appears to be such a filled out life. Well, that was a lovely comment. Um, probably self-serving for me to read the whole thing, but it was very, <laughs> you know, you get crappy comments and it's ones like that that remind you like, oh, yeah, this is why I do this because people are just so nice for the most part. Um, so I just thought that that was like a really interesting question that I hadn't quite thought of, of like, how do you basically, how do you source books? And then how do you kind of like build a backlog of things to read? So I thought we could have a nice little chatty evening talking about that um, and kind of how I build a backlog of books to read. And I thought this would be fun to do live because I'm betting that a lot of you guys will have suggestions as well. So um, the first thing I thought I should mention is that I have been a reader for a really long time. And I wonder, um, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, but I'm wondering from those 
of us amongst us who are, you know, have a couple of decades on me. I think some of this is a function of being a reader for a long time. And the longer you're alive, the more cycles of hype you've experienced and the more like books that you wanted to read when they were hot (laughs) first came out (laughs) that you never got around to, like they build. So I'm trying to think of an example. Um, Oh, there was one a few years ago. What was that called? Cutting for Stone. I haven't read that, but I remember when that came out and how all of the podcasters that I was listening to, because at the time I was like mostly a book podcast listener. I remember how all of them were reading and raving about that. That's a book I have not yet read, but theoretically would like to read at some point someday. So I do just want to mention for folks who are like younger, I, I have observed in my own life as a book nerd that the longer um the longer you have lived the more time you have had to hear about books that sound interesting to you so I also I think that there can be like a just kind of a natural building up of things that you always meant to read and and haven't yet um so I just want to mention that some of this might be just a virtue (laughs) by virtue of the fact of having lived a while okay thank you Len for validating uh that that was definitely apparently it continues to be the case as time goes on um yeah i used to read without knowing about booktube and not gonna lie i kind of miss that just because i found books that i could read anywhere so i will say that yes i prior to being kind of like on the bookish internet a lot of the places that i found things to read and well you know We'll, we'll move through these. I promise we'll also talk about places on the internet to find things. But prior to the internet, um, I was kind of an obnoxious little shit who wanted to be, um, you know, uh, well-read. <laughs> and and I, I took it upon myself at an early age to, like, find a list of the things that would make one well well-read. So prior to, like being influenced by social media. I think a lot of my influences on things I wanted to read were kind of like the things that would make me, you know, a connoisseur of literature. Um, So I think that that kind of was like the origin of finding things to read was focusing on sort of like what other people thought I should have read. And while I don't think you should live your life trying to chase the books that you should have read because there are no shoulds when it comes to reading. Um, You know, I do think that that gave me kind of a list of things to start working on. So that's how I've read a lot of the classics that I've read, which I think gives you, I don't know, I I was not feeling well Sunday, so I didn't get to participate in the discussion about should we still teach classics to kids. But I do think that part of what, um, at least for me in my life, I've enjoyed having is sort of that basis of a lot of sort of really popular literature over the last 200 years, having that as sort of a basis from which to, you know, continue to read from. So um, what else did I get? Where else did I get recommendations before the internet? Well, word of mouth. I think that, well, hmm, caveat though, because word of mouth is not good if people just, there is an art to a book recommendation. Okay, so if people, all they know is like, you like to read. I just read a book. You should read this book. That's not a great recommendation. But I do think people who really, I do take note in my life, I've always taken note of books that people were really passionate about, even if they weren't necessarily that appealing to me on the face value of it. I do think getting, like trying a book that somebody has felt that passionately about is always, I think, interesting. Um, I think that's part of, I'm a pretty, I mean, we've talked about this a lot on the channel, but I'm pretty omnivoracious. Like I'll try, I'll try almost anything. And I think that's how you kind of learn your taste, um, which we'll come back to in terms of finding books to read. So, um, let me catch up with the comments for a second here. Um, somebody else who had cutting for stone, on my TBR for five plus years, I tried to finally read it and DNF'd it at 30 pages. 
And I've done that a couple of times and exactly a waste of moving it around. It just is like, Oh my God. Um, good recommend. I am happy. There is no secrets. Um, there are no secrets. Let's see here. Brie. Yes. Okay. Brie is here. As I mentioned earlier, black and a thon it's coming. Go check out, go check that out on her channel. Um, okay. There's some hyped books that I've just heard so much thoughts and reactions on. I feel like I've read the book, even though I haven't. <laughs> I totally relate to that. And I do, like I was saying, I think that I do have a level of curiosity about hyped books, which keeps me coming back to them, even when, um, you know, even when I don't think I'm actually going to like them, basically, I can't help, but, uh but be intrigued. Okay. Yes. Also just the joy of blind discovery. So uh, moving on in my bookish reading life, um, I was a bookseller at Borders and this was horrible for my budget and the size of my TBR. But um, just like handling books and randomly, you know, picking ones up that were appealing to me, or if I saw a bunch of people buying them, uh, that definitely kind of added to my list. So don't never underestimate the the joy and appeal of just kind of walking through a bookstore and picking picking things up. My video going up this weekend is actually kind of about that. So um okay a Rory Gilmore list. Let me actually I'm gonna start this so I remember to come back to that because that's related to one of my things. Um oh yes please press like if you were liking it. Alexa hey um I also read what I thought would make me smart. Well, I did like them, but I don't know that it was great for me, like just reading things to <laughs> feel like I'm smart. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm going to start this. Sorry. I'm starring the ones as we go along here. Let's see here. Um, yes. That's one of our suggestions coming up later. Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay, pre-internet, I used to just walk up and down the shelves for hours reading the backs of books and picking up what looked interesting. I think that that is kind of an underrated method that's sort of dying out. I think somewhat that's because bookstores, well, I don't know. I, I don't know if other people feel this, but when I'm in smaller bookstores, I feel pressure to not linger as long. Um, and there's not as many of the big box bookstores around anymore. And now Barnes & Noble has, like, way fewer books than it used to. Um, so there you go. Yes, BookTube is basically world of, word of mouth dialed up to 10, 11. Exactly. I'm curious what your school reading was like. I know lots of people hated reading in school, at least in America, and that was my experience. I, again, I was a nerd and an obnoxious little shit, so please keep that in mind. I always really liked, like, school reading. I got really excited about summer reading and, like, you would get the list and I would sit there and, like, plan out what I wanted to read. I was that kid. Um, I will say, you know, going to evangelical school has its downsides. One of the upsides is that they do put a real premium on the classics. So I got, I, I feel like I did get a very, and I feel like at least when I was going through, they had a particularly good English program or like literature department um, or like kind of way that they moved you through the grades. So I always really liked my school reading and I did end up taking, I did AP English when I was a junior and senior. So we got some more discretion over what we read at that point um, because of that. So yeah, I don't know. That's I'm sure a very obnoxious answer, but it is the truth. Uh, yeah. In cap displays for sure. Never underestimate the power of marketing in either your local bookstore or in a library of like what they've put on, um, the tables. Yeah. God bless the library. When I was a kid, New acquisitions. Yes, I do the same thing. Okay, yeah, that was going to be one. Of, I'll just go ahead and mention that. Um, sometimes if I'm just trying to like get a sense of what's new and hot, I will go to the Libby and section and literally just look at what the new acquisitions are because I'm lucky enough that our library system is really good. So there's always a lot um, kind of on offer there. 
Love going to small bookstores. Yeah, hand hand selling in a bookstore. I mean, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, a bar, it's when you work at a bookstore, it's not, it's really not good for your pocketbook. Um, yeah, the airfare by uh, Jasper For uh, Ford, yeah, through Discovery. So it sounds like, oh yeah, the Scholastic Book Fair flyer, yes, oh my god, I got so excited about that. Um, oh, welcome, welcome to the live. Uh, yeah, so pre-internet, it seems like a lot of us were just sort of like snooping at the library, at other people's houses, word of mouth. Um, oh, Joss, this is such a great point. I was a much bigger rereader in pre-social media recommendations, and I figured it's because when I was young, I couldn't figure out where to get because that's such a great point. I have always been a rereader, but I was definitely, I mean, like, I had mass markets that were totally raggedy. Um, that I eventually just had to like recycle because I had reread them so many times if I really love them. So yeah, pre-internet, it was a lot of word of mouth, a lot of sort of just like random discovery. Um, so there you go. Okay. So it sounds like a lot of us had similar experiences kind of pre-internet. Um, okay. So that was sort of pre-internet. Once I became more of a kind of like a read, like once I had a better sense of my own tastes, maybe, is that the way to say it? I do think it takes time to kind of find your groove as a reader. And that's part of why I really encourage people to try to like push their boundaries. Like you'll like, I don't know, I'm always trying, wanting to try something new because I think that's how you kind of figure out what you like um, and sometimes get surprised by what you like. But once I had like at least some point of reference of what I enjoyed in a book, um, some strategies that I have used over the years to find things to read. Uh, one is book, like how to say this, I call it, I put down the, the author rabbit trail. Okay, what I mean by this is, let's say, now nowadays, the way that you could facilitate this would be like on the, you know, website, like on an Amazon page or Barnes and Noble or wherever, they'll often have an algorithm of, okay, sorry, I thought I heard a kitty up to no good. And she's, you know, kind of up to no good. Can you see her? Yeah, I can't, how do I, I can't, it's so hard. Here you go. There's some marble action for you in the back. Um, the author rabbit hole, rabbit trail. So like the algorithm will try to emulate this now, but pre-internet, it was a lot di more difficult. So basically what I mean by this is if you find an author who you enjoy, you've got two things that you should do from there. <laughs> One is if you like that author, read more from that author. So for instance, I've discovered recently that I like T. Kingfisher. So I have been investigating the description of all the books that T. Kingfisher has put out. And luckily they are a very pro prolific author. But I'm also, whenever you find an author you really like, the other thing to do is look for read-alike authors. So I'm trying to think of some read-alike authors, I would say. Um, like if you like Ruby Dixon, then Honey Phillips might be a read-alike author. So that would be kind of the pathway I would take is, okay, I like this author. Can I find more from that author? Or can I find other authors who are doing the same thing? So I think that is much easier now with the internet because you can do like a Google search and say, you know, authors like X, Y, Z and, uh, and get recommendations that way. Or you can look and see on, Amazon, if you go to their author page, like in the left hand side, there are some little blurbs of other authors who are similar. So like, that's a great way to kind of do, go down the rabbit hole. 
The other thing, and this is part of what um, I've said, or I used to have a series, or I guess I technically still do. I just haven't done an episode of it in a while called Know Your Tropes, which is um, if you know what about a book works for you, it's much easier to find other books like it. So for instance, if what you know about, I'm trying to think of a specific example. Okay, if what you liked about um, We Ride Upon Sticks from Quan Berry, if what you liked about that book was the fact that it was told in first person plural, a way to find more books to read would be to do a search for books told in first person plural. Oftentimes there'll be like a Goodreads list that might have other books on it. Um, or the you can usually find like some rando blog post from somebody on the internet at some point saying, here are other books that are like this. But you have to have enough self-awareness as a reader to be able to isolate what it is that you're looking for to find more of it. So for instance, if you saying that you like sci-fi is not specific enough often to find things that you're going to enjoy to read. A better approach would be to say, I really don't like time travel sci-fi, but I do really like a space opera. Even if you can just get to like that kind of one level down of understanding what trope you enjoy, it makes it much easier for you to search for read-alike titles. Um, I will say, I guess this is jumping the gun, but um, I do love here on booktube slash social media postings in general, the, if you like this, then you might like this. It's basically read alike comps um, from, you know, book selling days slash being a librarian. That's one of the main things they do is say, okay, what is it that you like about this book? And I can find um, another book that has those same elements. So I think being able to be a self-aware reader is a huge part of being able to find books to read because part of recommending a book to somebody is actually understanding what it is that they like about books, which is why often non-readers I find are not my favorite place to get book recommendations from because they haven't really, to them, like books are just a category of thing as opposed to having like specific nuances of what you might enjoy from a book. Does any of that make sense? So there's that. And then the third thing that I think in sort of my early internet reading life that I realized I enjoy doing is I'm often, um, I often am a completionist. So for instance, my whole, like I'm reading all of Nora Roberts stuff, which means at any given time, if I'm like, I don't kind of, I don't really know what I'm in the mood to read. I can think through like, well, I'm trying to finish this series or in that case, I'm trying to read all of the books from Nora Roberts. So I guess I can just go pick one of those up. So having kind of like mini projects or like being a completionist about something is a good way to sort of always have a backlog of books that you have banked that you can pull in when you're in the right mood. Or if you're doing some sort of specific reading challenge here on BookTube or wherever, um, you can kind of go look and see, okay, I have this series that I'm working on and that will work for this prompt or, you know, whatever, like you kind of, you guys kind of get the idea there. So, um, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to try to catch up on comments again. Let's see. Oh yeah. Well, I was more of a fanfiction.net kind of girl. Um, but yes. Mm, this is good. I think coconut ice cream, like coconut milk ice cream is the best of the dairy alternatives. But it is a little too sweet. So I can't have a lot of it, but it's okay. Yeah. Also limited income for sure. Grocery store books. Yeah, that, okay, women's prize winners. This was something else I used to do pre-internet. Um, 
I would try to read like all the Man Booker Prize books for a year or all of the winners for past years, things like that. So you can look at different kind of like prize lists. What, what, T. Kingfisher? Yeah, I love Nettle and Bone. And a lot of her uh, synopses always intrigue me. So I've given myself permission to just go full hog on them at this point. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Thank you, Zeely. This is something else I meant to say. Getting recs from your favorite authors is a great idea. If you follow them on Twitter... Or if you follow their um, reviews on Goodreads. Hold, please. Sorry, coconut ice cream went down the wrong tube there. Um, but yeah, like, for instance, I follow Roxanne Gay on Goodreads. And if I see that she's given something four or five stars, then, like, I'll go click on it and see if I'm interested. So. Yeah. Sometimes you have to <clears throat> dig in a little bit. The more specific you can be in a Google search, the better results. Um, the better results you'll get. But yeah, just Google author like blank and you'll get some recommendations. Um, I have I done author. I have it in my notebook. I don't know if I've ever actually made that video, but I have a list of it that I'll do at some point, but. Yeah, if if you find a particularly prolific author, it is exciting because you have a lot of books to read, but it can also be daunting. So it's like, oh my gosh, Nora, you've got nearly three hundred books. <laughs> it's very difficult to get through them all. Um, yeah, try something new. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, well, we'll get there. But yes, podcasts, I think can be a great, a great avenue. Yeah, if you find a trope, and you can name the trope, it makes googling a lot easier. Yeah, that's very true. If you, whenever somebody asks how to get into x genre, I always ask them, what do you already like reading? Because the best way to get into something new is to find a bridge into that genre. So if you love sci-fi and you're trying to get into mystery, like check out some sci-fi thrillers or some sci-fi mysteries. Like don't do too much new at one time. Like ease your way in. Oh yeah, the slumpage is real. Um, yeah, that's another idea is like books like if you like a different media property, you can try searching for that. Um, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Roxanne Gay. I love her. Rex. Rick Reardon. Oh, Uncle Rick. <laughs> There's just too, too many books and not enough time. Um, okay. So with that, I think we can go into just like direct social media influencing. So um, like I said, follow some of your favorite authors on Twitter or on Goodreads or wherever, because they often will post about books that they are reading. And if you've liked their books, you may also like the books that they're reading. I also, um, so of course you can get into specific booktubers and stuff, but I also really, especially for nonfiction stuff, I really love um, listening to podcasts that so the one I have in mind is um, why is this happening with Chris Hayes uh, he 
very frequently has authors of nonfiction books on to discuss their book. And if I'm intrigued by the topic of the book, then I will either pick that book up or if they reference other ones, like I think podcasts can be a great non book related podcast can be a great source of finding particularly nonfiction books to read. Um, I would also say in terms of nonfiction, a good way to find nonfiction books you are interested in reading would be if you have a topic in mind, rather than just generally, I'm trying to get into nonfiction, um, like have a topic that you're interested in, and then look for either books about that. But like I said, I think even looking for like podcasts or documentaries, or YouTube videos where people are talking about that nonfiction topic, often books will come up in the course of that. So that's also a way that you can kind of get recommendations, not directly from a booktube or a bookstagram or whatever. I should also mention one of my biggest tips for building a TBR is whatever place you were tracking your, well, first of all, I have no idea how people remember what they want to read without some sort of tracking. <laughs> so people who like don't have good reads or don't have a spreadsheet or whatever. Um, I don't know how you keep track of what you want to read. Just point blank period. For me, one of the number one ways that I keep track of things when I hear about them is that if I hear about them, I immediately put them into Goodreads. And also I try to, at the same time, look up if they're available at my library and put them on my, like I tag them in my Libby app um, because I will not remember it otherwise. So the other thing that this does is if I go ahead and mark it as something I'm interested in, if I kind of forget about it, but I hear about it again from a different source, if I see that I've already marked it as something that I'm interested in, it kind of bumps it up in my estimation. So again, taking, let's use T. Kingfisher as an example. Um, I'd gotten some recommendations actually from you guys a lot saying like, I think you would really like T. Kingfisher and different kind of titles got thrown around. And I was kind of keeping track of that. And then I noticed that there were a few of them that were getting recommended to me over and over again. And once that was happening, it was easier for me to say, okay, I'm interested in A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. I'm interested in Sword Heart. I'm interested in Paladin's Grace and Ned Limbone and The Hollow Places. Like it helped me, like the repetition of it and seeing that I had already had it recommended to me and kind of had taken the trouble to make note of it, let me know that it was something that I was actually truly interested in reading. So that's one tip I have is just like, Whenever you hear about a book that you are interested in, go ahead and write it down in the moment, even if you're not going to do something about it in the moment. I think it helps keep track. I have no idea how somebody, I don't know, unless you're just like not building a TBR and you're truly just operating off of vibes, which I love. Um, I love that for you. I could not live that way. <laughs> But um, if you are just like operating off of vibes and that is how you're building TBRs or that's how you're finding what you want to read, I get that. But if you are trying to keep track or you have some kind of list of things you want to read, I have no idea how people do that without at least a basic Goodreads list of some kind or a notes app list or something. I don't know. So that's something else I would recommend. Uh, let's see here. Um, Kindle book samples through following a new favorite author. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I think documentaries and podcasts and YouTube are great ways to find nonfiction to read for sure. Um, yeah, I would say Kindle Unlimited's similar authors list has been really helpful for me in speculative romance in particular, but just romance in general. Um, they have pretty good recommendations. I will say the searchability, like general searchability in Kindle Unlimited is not good, but if you have a starting point of an author you like, I do think you can kind of rabbit trail after them. So 
Yeah, this is another great point, Stacey. Bi bibliographies of nonfiction books you enjoy are a great resource for books and authors. Um, if you also, if you read historical fiction, she's just pawing at the door, living her best life. Um, if you read historical fiction, you will often also see uh, bibliographies for those. So that can be another way to get them. The idea of not adding an interesting sounding book on Goodreads makes me legitimately anxious. Yes, same. Yeah, a book all of has great nonfiction recs. Um, yes, I also do this, MJ. Several TBR shopping lists on Amazon. If a bit book goes on sale, I auto nab it and pick through the rest gradually. That's almost exactly what I do. Um, yeah, and I have kind of different, like I have different tiers of how interested I am in a book in my TBR list on Amazon. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, story graph, same thing. Same thing. Oh, welcome. Yeah, screenshots, I do that sometimes, but I hardly ever go back and actually do something with this screenshot. I've learned this about myself. So I try to go into my actual list if I want to do something with it for real. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, man, this is going to be embarrassing. Okay, now I'm going to go see how many I have on my on my list. It's going to be unwieldy. Oh, there's a new interview with a vampire. Ooh, interesting. Okay, <laughs> I have 1,867 books on my one to read shelf. So there you go. Um, I also don't understand the zero TBR life, but some people like, like I said, they're just floating on vibes and I love that for them. So yeah, um, I call, yeah, in terms of TBR management, I have what I call my active TBR and those are books where I have an active plan to read them versus like a rainy day TBR. So my bookshelf over here which I guess I could show you. That bookshelf is mostly my rainy day TBR. Like I don't, for the most part, have active plans for those. Yes, I'm aware that's an entire bookshelf of that. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I have two shelves on my bedroom bookshelf. That is where I keep my active TBR books. Um, but I do think in terms of just sort of managing your TBR, it can be a helpful strategy unless you are somebody who only has, you know, 10 books on your TBR at a time. Um, so this is also in terms of just straight up discovery. I think this is a great tip of just scrolling through the available now section on Libby. I think I did a vlog of that a couple of Christmases ago. Um, let's see here. Yeah, newsletters are also a good source for TBR building, especially if you're trying to build frontless TBR. Um, I subscribe to several newsletters from publishers. My favorite is definitely Tor. Um, I like, they have like good articles in addition to hyping their own stuff and they give you freebies, ebook freebies. So um, also I just tend to like the things that they're publishing. So that helps, but anyway. Yes, newsletters from either blogs. So I subscribe to a couple of the Book Riot newsletters. Um, I'm on the daily, uh, like, digest of Smart Bitches Trashy Books for Romance. Um, Tor I, is one of the publisher ones I follow. What else? But yeah, I've, I've subscribed to several newsletters over the year, and I often, like, kind of, you know... If I've got a couple of minutes in between meetings at work, I'll pop one of those open and take a read. Oh, I also follow the um, book club newsletter from the Washington Post. So, yeah. There you go. 
Oh, yes, Peter Jelly Clark is so wonderful. Yeah. Oh man, that's vicious. Okay, Lydia, you're making me feel a little bit better. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes, the kitties are, you're going to see them running around because they had a traumatic day of strangers coming into the house. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. F um, love following people on Goodreads with 10,000 books and I just browse their shelves every once in a while. That's another recommendation I have is if you have reviewers, so this is again starting to segue a little bit more into some of the social media stuff, but on Goodreads in particular, if there are reviewers who I find myself often agreeing with, if maybe not like their exact opinion, at least the direction of their thoughts, I will often check and see if they have rated a book that I'm interested in to see what they had to say about it. Um, that goes the other way too. Like sometimes there's people who I never agree with <laughs> who, if I see that they love something, I'm like, hmm, maybe I don't want to read this. And then I also have, there's some people I follow who I know that they give almost exclusively five stars and I will check and see if they have given it less than five stars. And if that's the case, and I'm on the bubble, sometimes I will not read it. Because <laughs> I'm like, if that person gave it less than five stars, if that person gave it three stars, that means it was like an abomination before the Lord. So yeah. Um, but following people on Goodreads, I think, can be um, a good way to find books. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that is discipline, Bailey. I salute you. Um, oh, this is an interesting idea. I've definitely clicked on an audiobook na narrator's name that I liked in Libby to see what else they've read, which has led to some fun discoveries. Um, yeah, it sounds like Read, Love, Listen does something similar. Uh, yeah, if you can do... If you can find just like new release websites, that can be a way to look for things. Um, oh yeah, that's another newsletter I do. I do BookBub and I've gotten much more disciplined about not just getting all of the freebies that interest me there, but in particular, they often have speculative romance freebies in there and I'm just a sucker for those. So even if... I'm not actually interested in them. <laughs> They're free, so I have to, right? It would be like throwing away money otherwise, right? Um, following, yeah, exactly. Authors often will shout out what they're reading, so that can be a great strategy. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Look at Brie with this disciplined TBR. Um. Oh my God. My TBR is a mood reader's worst nightmare. I pull out a number of books from 80 to 100 in January, divide them by 12 months and read through the stack. Oh my God. I could never. Okay. That is, that is dedication and discipline that I do not possess and would immediately go into a slump if I tried to do, but I, I salute you. I see someone rate everything one star. The first thing I do is go to their profile and see what they gave a five star. Cough, Leanna. Cough. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Um, yeah, it definitely, I should caveat all of this. I considered book collect, collecting, TBR curation, TBR management, catalog like that to me is its own hobby within the umbrella of reading as my hobby so like actually reading the books is one piece of the hobby but finding books to read I find to be enjoyable and takes a lot of time and I like that but not everybody does right like I I totally get that this everything I'm describing is excessive 
I live in that reality. But this is for if you find the project of finding books interesting, which I do. So, um, oh my God, Beth, 9,700 books. Good gravy. Um, man, okay. I'm not sure if I'm in the minority, but I've never read a book based on a previous review because of being a book reader, reader a, bo a book reviewer. Um, I definitely do, but I'm influenceable, so. Let's see here. Oh yeah, this is a good point. Libby has a shelf called Skip the Line. It's newer releases with long hold times, but they keep one copy that comes available quicker, but you can only keep for seven days. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh my gosh, yes, relatable. Adding books to my TBR is quick, easy, quick, fun. Remembering why they're there years later on and exercise and self-reflection. Good Lord, yes. Um, okay, so then I guess the kind of final leg of things I wanted to talk about is just, I am influenced by influencers. I enjoy it, um, especially because I'm a creator on BookTube. I enjoy seeing what my compadres are reading and you know if there's something that's really buzzy that everybody's talking about I enjoy being a part of that so even if it's a book that I might not necessarily pick up on my own I kind of enjoy sometimes falling for the hype um I will say that one of my favorite videos to make and definitely one of my favorite videos to watch from people are anticipated reads videos so I love seeing what people are looking forward to um coming up in a series. Yeah. Um, I just, I really love that. Uh, I do think one of the things in the original prompt for this, Jade was talking about the diversity of books that I read, both in kind of like genre and mood and whatever. Um, I also think following a diverse range of people in social media can be helpful. Like I have people, I pay attention to what they're reading, who they only read mystery or they only read romance or they only read whatever. So, you know, I'm not going to get everything I want to read from them, but they can be good for kind of specific niche recommendations. Um, I also think one of my goals on my TBR over the years has been to build the books on my TBR that are by or about people who are not like me. And I think one of the most important ways that you can get those recommendations is to follow and pay attention to what people who are not like you are reading. Um, so I think that that's also part of getting a broader set of recommendations than you might otherwise. I will say one of the limitations is the fact that like, I'm an English language speaker. So I do know that I have like a blind spot, I think. And I, I foresee this as my journey. <laughs> I don't think I'm quite here yet, but I could see myself like taking a year to try to read almost entirely translated fiction. Like I see for myself, like when I look forward into the future and think about like 40s Mara, I see a journey for her of being like a translation fiction girly. Um, I definitely do read more. Yeah, I think that's true. I read more things in translation in the last couple of years than I normally do. Um, but... Yeah, I think that that could be also an interesting route to get more, like an even broader diversity of books into the mix for me. So, um, let's see here. Yeah, I had to browse a lot of booktube channels to find people I clicked with the best. I would say that there's also two different ways to consume bookish related content. I have people I follow and I love their videos, even though we do not have like anything in common in terms of what we read. So those are people that I go to more for vibes and just sort of bookish enjoyment rather than getting recommendations of things to read. Um, Um, 
subreddit for Rex. Oh yeah, that's an interesting idea. Uh, if I like the first book in a series, do I add the whole series to the TBR or just the next book? It kind of depends on what sort of series it is. Um, if it's a serialized series, meaning that it's sort of one story told over however many books, then usually if I like the first book, I'm at least theoretically going to finish the series. I may bail at some point if I stop enjoying the story. Um so, yes, if it's serialized, if it's episodic, and I loved the first book, I might add all of them, but I might not. I might just add the ones that I'm interested in. When I become a translation girly, please start. I have it. I own it. It's on my TBR. There you go. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Uh, focus on specific genres. Who are your favorite booktubers? Ooh, gosh. Okay. Um... Oh, God, I'm blanking on people right now. So for sci-fi fantasy, I really like Petrick, Leo. I love um, Angela from Literature Science Alliance. Uh, Leanna, obviously, from Leanna's Library. Um, God, who else? Let's see, don't ask me specifics. I blank out here. Romance... Um, Ashley from Bookish Realm and I have pretty similar taste in romance, um, though she's an omnivore, but I particularly enjoy her romance recs. Um, Izzy from Happy For Now. Uh, I feel like romance, I actually don't do as much booktube. I do more, I'm more influenced by whatever thing is, <laughs> this is so bad. I get intrigued by things that I see on either Kindle Unlimited or BookTok. For romance. Um, I'm also a book romance. I, I follow um, Romance Landia on Twitter. Like, I follow a lot of romance related people on Twitter. So, I get a lot of romance recommendations from Twitter, actually. Mystery. I feel like I do. I get a lot of recommendations from Anticipated. Like, I don't know if I have a specific person that I'm watching for mystery right now. Um, I feel like I get a lot of recommendations for in, from anticipated videos, like anticipated book videos, and then also from um, the Book Riot Mystery newsletter. I feel like I'm not doing a very good job of being specific here, but um, let's see here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Recommendation. Oh, Emily Fox, I used to get more mystery recommendations from. I feel like she's not been doing that as much. Uh, okay, there you go. Look at all these people who are much better on their translation journey. Hey, buddy. You said to go away. You being naughty? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Fantasy is so big on booktube. Um, I feel like I get... I feel like fantasy is an area where I can fall into the hype more than some other genres. Because, like, I want to love some of the fantasy books that are hot. And I just am not going to. So I probably should just stop. Like, I know that they're not my thing, and yet I still am always tempted by them. Um, yeah. 
so also book talk also bookstagram like i if i see a lot of people posting about a particular i think particularly for like hot new books um bookstagram and book talk both i think influence me um i should mention i'm also very influenceable because i'm willing to try almost anything like I mean, there are some things that I'm not as into. Like these days, I'm not as much um, into like liter literary fiction, like contemporary literary fiction, um, which I feel like is a lot of the podcasts I used to listen to were a lot of contemporary literary fiction. And um, so I think I just have kind of realized I want, I don't know. Again, my next video, you'll see me angsting about the fact that I think I want to like the, <laughs> those books more than I actually do at this point. Um, so. I think I am probably going to do that because it's been so hyped and I'm just intrigued by it. I don't know what that is, so I don't know. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I think you can find people. It just, it just takes time. More than book talk, yeah. I keep getting influenced by book talk. I mean, they did love Ice Planet Barbarians, so they're not always wrong, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, and yeah, I think, okay, I starred a few comments, so let's go back to that. Okay, we talked about this already. Who most matches my reading tastes? <sighs> if I had to pick one person who I think is genuinely the closest to my reading taste, it probably is Ashley from Bookish Realm. Um... Maybe Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts. I'd say probably those two are the closest. Um, but I don't know. Some people are just also really good at pitching books that even if I don't actually want to read them, I'm tempted. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with this. Broaden your reading list. Reading things outside your comfort zone will help you understand nuances in life. I mean... Yes, but even aside from that, I just think, like, I don't know. It's how you figure out what you do and don't like. Okay, Rory Gilmore's reading list. This reminds me. Sometimes, yes. I also think that looking up random book lists online can be fun. So, like, for instance, I have a road trip coming up, and I want to do, like, a road trip vlogging project. So I was doing some, like, deep dives on trying to find books that had road trips in them. Um so I think that can also be fun. Like if you have a specific, like if you're trying to build a TBR for a specific challenge or video or mood or whatever, I think if you kind of like go spelunking for very niche uh, searches, that can be helpful. Oh yeah, okay, I started this because yeah, I think the other thing is talking about books and like the process of finding books can be a way to stay interested in reading like if your interest is flagging I think having this as a hobby has made me like even more interested in reading um yes we talked about this uh from apple books oh yeah just uh, this goes back to the idea of like hey like try to see if you can find an algorithm that actually works for you and you can go from there Haunt the new authors section. Yeah. Okay. So those are the ones I starred. And <sighs> the only being new tomorrow. I mean, I'll watch the vlog. No, I'm actually, I'm interested in it. <laughs> like, I think that I'm not sure that I would, I don't know if I would like it or not. Like I could totally see a world where I would read Zodiac Academy and be like, this reminds me so much of my fanfiction.net days and I love this. Or maybe it is as bad as everyone says it is, but I don't know. Um, yeah, very much this for me. Um, 
like for instance, I used to love um, Simon Savage's podcast, and and I also enjoy watching his booktube videos. But our tastes are not aligned. Um, but I just enjoy listening to him talk about books. Um, yeah, advertising vibes so real, so real. Yeah, this tends to be me too, Danielle. I take recs from different channels for different genres. Um, let's see here. I hope this is a good time to ask this question. I don't ever follow hype when it comes to books I choose. Maybe because I'm a 61 POC grandmother, but reading books while I do series, review copies while I ever grow as a booktuber. I have, I mean, I think all you can do is be true to the way that you read. Um, you know, you can follow best practices of how to grow a social media following. Like, you can do that. Um, but a lot of it is kind of lightning in a bottle that you can't control. So I would focus on being true to what you enjoy about reading and the kind of content you want to create and trying to find other people who you want to build some community with. And I always recommend looking for people who have started around the same time you did, because that's people who are also looking to connect. This book was so descriptive and atmospheric and didn't need all that. Not, not I, but I'm, see, a reader for every book, a reader for every book and a book for every reader. There you go. Um, let's see here. Okay. Oh, I am running out of juice, guys. Um, so we'll start to wind this down, but I hope this was helpful, and I appreciate Dr. Jade for the prompt. Um, yeah, I do too. I love how literary fiction people talk about books. Yes, I, which is why... I honestly think my love of that kind of podcasting ethos when I first was like getting into online bookish stuff informs a lot of how I try to talk about books because I really enjoy, I don't know, I really enjoy diving into the <laughs> depth and nuances of genre fiction in that way. I just don't like contemporary literary fiction um, that often anymore, but I really like talking about it. I like talking about books in that manner, if that makes sense. Yeah, it reminds me of the best parts of English class. Yeah. Okay, guys, my battery is running low. Not my computer battery, but my mental battery. I get very tired these days and back on that phase of life. We love that for me. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining. And if you guys have other suggestions of live topics, definitely put it in the comments because I'm trying to get back into um, doing more lives. So if you guys have things that you think would be fun to talk about live, let me know. And I will also try to get enough energy together um, to actually get someone else <laughs> to do the scheduling to get somebody else on here. So. I hope you guys have a lovely evening. Um, there will be a blog up this Sunday, so look for that. And have a great evening. Bye.